They're all but her but farming can, units. So. I could try to make it interesting. All right. So we got to. Uh, can't vote. Uh, women, oh, women's, yeah. Women's yes. Yes. Okay, so anyway. Um, so when we couldn't vote, couldn't own property, couldn't make a will, couldn't file a lawsuit or serve on a jury. Um, but in the early stages of the revolution, like during the liberal phase, women did gain some temporary rights, at least for a little while. Um, they were able to form and participate in clubs, like political clubs, as well as debate politics. And they had some limited rights and gains early in the liberal phase, but that didn't last long. The radical phase reduces their rights in general. And their rights will be reduced even more when it gets to Napoleon later on, but we're not there yet. So. All right, anyway. So one of the more prominent women to know in, this, in the revolutionary period is Olympe de Gauche, the slave right here. She was a writer who fought for the rights of women and minorities in the revolution. So she was a writer who fought for the rights of women and minorities. She was a little bit miffed after the uh, Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen came out. So she wrote her own response to the Declaration of Rights of Woman and of the Female Citizen. I'll give you a minute to write that. Female Citizen. So she's one of the few that actually will stand up and challenge the views about women uh, under the Revolutionary period. This book, the Declaration, was a response to the failure of the Revolution to extend their ideals to women. Like all this talk about rights of citizens and men and equality, fraternity, so forth and so on. Uh, she's quoted as saying, women have the right to mount the scaffold. They should likewise have the right to mount the rostrum. I mean, like they have, the, they're gonna, they have the right to be executed or killed. They can also have the right to, you know, the rostrum being like a political podium for speeches. They should have the right to have a say. She advocated for divorce rights and the right of children whose parents were not married to inherit paternal property. So she advocated for divorce rights and the right of children to uh, to. Uh, who had parents who had died to inherit paternal uh, property. So she had kid for the divorce rights and the right of children whose parents were not married to inherit paternal property. So like many women, she initially supported the revolution, but as, as rights kind of became closed off again, she later... Uh, was dismissive of, dismissive of it, and she dismissed a lot of the uh, excesses the revolution took place in. And of course, what's going to happen to her if she has all these views? Guillotine. guillotine, right? Look at the year, right? So she's guillotined in 93, so during what? Uh, Reign of Terror, right? So she's guillotined during the Reign of Terror. She also aligned with the Girondists, so. She allied, she allied with the, the moderates, the Girondists. <laughs> well, it's also been like a huge gap in the material, right? Here I know, that's call. the problem. Oh, yeah, that, that's awesome. Yeah. And then, like, this point in the year, like, whatever I learn, is this is like the least we're seeing because mm -hmm. I'm so. It's out. also heavily tested time. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. then you have to go study, like, your old stuff where they turn. No, I'm saying, like, this material is heavily tested. Usually. Oh, really? That's really fun. It's still harder to testing. I say you Parts. Parts. I say you let her. I've already talked to... We've already... Okay. Talked to okay. Go with me. Okay. Okay. All right, so... Um, 
It's not, he didn't make his No, I, I admit it from the get go. Like, I was like, this is not a good unit. Like, I was this like, is. Like, class. Yeah. I said it from the start. Like, we have to go through it because it's in the key concepts. The highest grade I've ever made. What's that? Wait. I know. Thank you. All right. Society of Republican Revolutionary Women. The Society of Republican Revolutionary Women. So this group lasted only five months, but it raised issues important to women at the time. So the Society of Republican Revolutionary Women was a group that only lasted five months, but it raised issues important to women at the time. So was it like through, like from fog to snow? <laughs> no, from heat to, you know, the yeah, This is a very important question. Hi. Wonder what year it is in, in, uh, in, in the revolutionary calendar. Like three at this point? <laughs> no, I meant like now. Like it's right to We're the so, like It hasn't. Did I have a 200? Yeah, it hasn't. Wait. But they're 10 months. Yeah, it's been 200 and like 200 and. But there's 10 20. months. Did they still use that calendar? There's 10 months back. No, that's crap. That's crap. It lasts like. It lasts like seven, eight years, and that was it. So. But then there's like 10 weeks in each. Or there's 10 days in each week, so does it add up? More of a bounce out. Right, that's when the revolution started. You're so smart. Right. 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 Not well. The radical revolution started in '92. That's when the counter was started. So like, so September '92. Did they have a year zero? No. What year one? So they just started right off the one. They didn't have like a. Yeah, we don't have a zero either. They didn't have like a one month, two month. Now we made a year. We didn't really start calculating time until like a few years after. It was way after Jesus. So. That's why, like, we were probably wrong. Oh, yeah, we're wrong. We're definitely wrong. But who cares? I know. We're in too deep. Yeah. All right, anyway. Um, So this was founded in 93. It consisted largely of working class women who vowed to rushed to the defense of the fatherland. So it, it developed in 93, consisted largely of working class women who vowed to rush to the defense of the fatherland. Because, <laughs> you know, Republicanism. So it consisted largely of working class women who vowed to rush to the defense of the fatherland and to live for the republic or die for the republic. Okay. To live for the republic or die for the republic. Yeah. <laughs> Women of the group were decorated with red bonnets to signal their membership. So they all wore red bonnets to signal their membership. Which often provoked <laughs> violence against them. Which is why they didn't last so long. So it provoked violence against them because they made themselves stand out. Okay, wait, why were people... Uh, well, because they were radical, so some of the, some people targeted them because they were and also female. So, like, they agreed with what's his name, Rob? <laughs> Rose Beer. <laughs> Initially, yes, until they turned on, on they turned on them. So during the reign of terror in '93, the Jacobins turned against the women's leaders, and so they dissolved. Um, which is off like that's what kind of happened with the committee on public safety is that like they ended up turning on like, everybody eventually. Like they. At some point, they supported them. If they believe there's any doubt, they just turn on them. So, like, they didn't make any friends that way. Was that the same time that they beheaded Rose? Rose was not in, in beheaded until July '94. Oh, okay. So, so this is, all this before. Was just superstition that they were black. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. The dechristianization of France. So, the National Assembly. Pursued a policy of de-Christianizing. So, like, the National Assembly during the liberal phase was not trying to abolish Christianity. They were trying to limit it, exactly. Have the, the, have the country control the church, like have the state control the church, and have, like, bishops elected and appointed by the new government. But they were not trying to eliminate Christianity in general. So that's the liberal phase. But the radical phase did try to do that. And a lot of this is influenced by the Enlightenment, right? So the Enlightenment had a big impact, obviously, on the revolution. So there was a big emphasis on trying to, you know, promote more reason. But when the radical phase took over, they wanted to abolish it altogether and only do reason. 
So the Enlightenment had a big influence, and they try to push reason over faith. Uh, so, like for example, whenever they, whenever the radical faith takes over, they'll remove the 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 word saint from all of their street signs. So if it was like Saint this street, Saint that street, no more. Now it's just you know, uh, George Street, George Street, Catherine Street. Yeah. But it makes it classy. No, no saints. Uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral was turned into the Temple of Reason. So it was converted into the Temple of Reason instead. Okay. They removed all religious uh, images and, and objects and made it like, instead created like these statues or images for like liberty or virtue or equality. Oh yeah, they're real big on virtue and equality. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they beat you when you win that. <laughs> A new Republican calendar was adopted that began on September 22nd, 1792. So you can see right there, September 22nd, 1792 was the what first. That? that was day one of year one. No, it's, it's the what month was that? It was vintage, so it's, I can't see the French words too blurry, but it's Vindemar. What month is it? Vintage? Right now? It's uh, no, I was thinking Frost. It was it's Frost month right now. It's Frost month right now. Next month will be snow, snow month. What's that? Uh, snow month is from there. It looks like I can't. It says it's not blurry. Uh, yeah, so we're. I did, but I can't read that. It's blurry. Okay, yeah. You took all the credits of French and you can't think of the word. No, like, again, what about you? How much French have I used since college? This is awful. You should have memorized it, though. I did. And to pause it on the test. <laughs> that was done. <laughs> so why do we come back? I'm just saying, but if you don't, but either, no matter what, no matter how you learn stuff in school, if you're not using it constantly, you're just not going to retain it. That's my point. So what's the point learning in the first place? Because you're going to at least be in the know. You'll at least be aware of stuff. You'll be aware of stuff. All right, anyway. All right. So... That was the day the National Convention declared France a republic. So that's, that's day one of year one. Each year had 12 months of three 10-day three weeks. So each year had 12 months of three 10-day weeks. That was how the new calendar operated. I thought it was 10 months. That, I'm sorry, 12. Did I say 10? Are you serious? Wow. Who cares? 12, 12 months of 10-day weeks, sorry. The remaining dates got designated as festival days. So the remaining dates got designated as festival days. And they made new festival days. They got rid of all the old church ones. And they made new festival days. Like celebrations of like liberty or virtue or patriotism. Right. Just fewer festivals, right? We're only going to have a few now. 1792, day one of year one. Um, so the new calendar faced a lot of opposition from the beginning, and it was eventually abandoned. It only lasted a few years, but hey. We did it. We did okay, it. Okay, exactly. wait, if they had a 12-month calendar, we had a 12-month calendar. Right, but, we, but all our months are all jacked up, right? This is all laid out with very, every month the same. This is like a metric system for a calendar. So exactly. they just saw, they create like their own time. Right. And that it will work out. Right. Right. I mean, most of the world, not all parts of the world use our date system. Like India and those areas, they use, like China, they use dates are going way farther back. The minds are really just rolling in their grave. Like, really? Really? They might have jokes. They might have jokes. All right. All right, so the closeout of the French Revolution. So by 1795, the moderate Girondists who had survived, the moderate political thinkers and economic thinkers, they had returned and developed a new constitution. We said that after the reign of terror ended, the committee was disbanded. They spent that next year writing the constitution, operating as a republic under the old national convention structure, and removing a lot of the radicals. But they finally created a new constitution by August of 95 that will lead to what's now called the Directory. So the Directory is the final government of the revolution. That's not Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> or it was kind of like what was it the co or, or like the Constitution of like something ninety one yeah. the War of ninety two yeah 
So anyway, so this was made by a bunch of more moderate folks. Uh, it developed France's first bicameral legislature. So it developed France's first bicameral legislature. Right, exactly. Uh, the, the two chambers were the Council of 500, which is the lower chamber. <laughs> so that's the same question. And then the upper chamber was the Council of Elders, which had 250. So the Council of, of uh, 500 was the lower house. Council of Elders with 250 was the upper house. To prevent another Robespierre, they created a five-man executive committee called the Directory. So you had the legislature, which was like 700 plus dudes. Then you had a five-man Directory who all had even power. So basically they created an oligarchy for the most part. They created this oligarchy with five people that were supposed to run the country. So the directory is the five people? Right, the five uh, executive officers. But they're all equal. There's not like a Robespierre who would like just run off and control it. So here's how it works. It wasn't a republic anymore. Mass population could vote for electors and then the electors would vote for the members of the legislature. Wow, kind of like a president. Like exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. That's so the mass population would vote for electors, who the electors would then vote for the members of the parliament or the national legislature. And then the members of that parliament would then vote for the five directory leaders. Because, yeah, basically all these moderate Girondists who took over, like, they were like, okay, we need to remove essentially a lot of the mass populist influence. Let's get all those San Calat influence out of here. So all that San Calat normal people influence, they removed all that. And let's kind of go back to having more of the upper middle class people lead the country instead. No more tax. Right. Um, men who now voted also had substantial property requirements too. So like men who could vote now had to have property requirements. So the radical phase had its where any male could vote, universal male suffrage. Now the directory will have its where it's essentially only property people again. What number is the government? Uh, uh, I think Corey, five. you're yes, yeah, number five. It works out, directory five guys. Five, good, go. All right, failure. So this was another unsuccessful attempt at government. It only lasted four years. <laughs> no. It's much spicier. I'm like shocked <laughs> if somebody didn't like take over for any thirty years. Well, they they tried. Remember, they tried to come and take over, and they fought. They successfully fought them off. So why? Because revolution. They want to fight for their ideals. Their, their, new count, their, their new calendar. Their new calendar. Their new calendar is so awesome. Years, it's like it's like the, the like whenever New Year's comes, everybody's like, mm, you know, like exactly. this is France. New Year, new government. Do you think we're done though? You think we're done with France changing governments? This is like the next hundred years of France. Oh wow. Is she, are they okay? Is <laughs> They're okay now. France is going to see that. Yeah. This is their <laughs> Uh, they heavily tax their citizens, but you know, but other than that, they're you know. uh, So the directory continued to support expansion. So the French military continued to expand under this phase. So the war is still happening. The war against other countries is still going on. It also, like during this phase, it was attacking American ships. So it was trying to bring American into this as well. Yeah, this is next was you have oh, time period, yeah. Okay. Um, it also supported the French army to enforce its will. So they also kinda they also kinda ran like a military state where like they used the military to like enforce its policies. When the radical factions like the Jacobins protested what the government was doing, they just used the army to like silence them. And over time, they eventually had this new up-and-coming general lead the army, a guy named Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah, he might be important. This is him right here, Thumb Napoleon. 
Yeah, he was five seven. He wasn't that short. Yeah, which would be like, like I think Ben was actually above average, isn't he? Right. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, sort of. I mean, just I think it's just kind of more of his opponents you know, kind of smear him that way. Uh, also, the, the benefit of the Army continuing to go out and fight is that it kept people in the Army, thus it kept unemployment low. So because the Army kept going out and fighting and conquering territory, it kept people in the Army through the levy and mass, and it kept unemployment low back in France, which obviously was helpful. We went through all that yesterday, like all the benefits they got from the Army, too. We have questions. Yes? Weren't they upset about the tax? <laughs> For wars in the first place, and now they're just like fighting everyone. But now it's like their wars. Uh, yeah, nationalism, nationalism, right? Nationalism. Um, but France. Uh, Is their wars? I mean, they believe so. Like it doesn't matter because there's how they believe it. Stupid. Uh, France grew weary, though, over time of the corruption and effectiveness of the directory. So the directory was very corrupt. It was not a very effective oligarchy. And that general dissatisfaction was shown in the 97 election. So they had their election in 97 after, after two years. In the 97 election, they elected a lot of conservatives and pro-monarch people. So a lot of people who got elected to the national parliament were conservatives and pro-monarchy people. And those guys favored peace and any price. And so like, it's very likely that had those... Basically, this is kind of how you got Napoleon. In those last couple of years, you have all these conservatives take over. So the fear was that they were going to lose the revolution. They were going to lose all the else of the revolution. So there was a coup being developed that would basically bring Napoleon, Napoleon in as a figurehead guy, but then still run the government with revolutionary ideals. And that backfired whenever Napoleon comes in and basic power. But there was a fear that the growing conservative rising would be a backlash to the revolution and they would lose everything they were in the past 10 years. But the whole the, the problem was the new government was ineffective. It was not very effective. Oligarchy dictatorship structure with the directory. So that's was why it fails and they've been decided to go away from it. Yes. I think they after all those years they just got they felt like they needed to go to that because what war like team just kept them in effect and turmoil. Right. I mean, you're right, but it just it just did not. They, as at some point, they're like, I trust them.